Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you today. This is uh, the Golden Hour on Friday, September 22nd at 1118. I'm really excited today to have Stephanie Shatarian from Flow Content talking about videos today. And video is one of Google's top ranking factors. And if you're not doing videos now, you could be, what is it, being left in the dust. And so it's an important way to communicate with your clients, with friends, and to show your relevancy. So with that being said, I'd like Stephanie to talk to us today about that. And why don't you get us started, Stephanie, with an introduction about yourself. Tell us a little bit about you, you please. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be having this conversation with you. Uh, always love talking about video. I've been doing it for, gosh, um, definitely over 10 plus years, but certainly in 2013, when the bandwidth really opened up for it to be available for most businesses to be able to use it. But a little bit about Flow Content. So we're a boutique video production company based in the Bay Area, and we really specialize in making connections between organizations and the audiences they want to reach. So we kind of tend to work in the professional services space, connecting businesses to prospects, nonprofits with supporters. And then we also have this little slice of really creating connection through generations um, from elder generations to younger generations uh, through the power of video that typically has a documentary feel and is sometimes actual documentary. But I think for the purposes of our marketing conversation, right. documentary feel. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Okay. What is the documentary feel? What does that mean? So really all I mean by that is that we are working with real people and telling real stories. So like, for example, you might see something that is, you know, like an advertisement that is using actors. That is not the kind of work that we do where we're working with talent, or you might've seen animated explainers or uh, right. animated types of videos. We are really talking about showing people who in many cases don't have a lot of video experience. Uh, and really having them come across as their true authentic selves. Okay. I love that. So we've got a great list of questions here. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you actually offer, like your suite of services, what you guys do? Yeah. So, uh, our approach is really a boutique approach. Everything we do is custom. We don't have packages. We don't have like levels. Like it's really about uh, working with the client to figure out what's going to be best for them within their goals. So that said, we kind of have a, a process and it starts with budget. <laughs> so think of it more like a kitchen remodel as opposed to like something you're buying off the shelf. So there's all kinds of ways we can slice and dice things, but typically I can just kind of walk you through our process really quickly. We start with a discovery session, which is really getting an understanding of the brand. Uh, what are the goals of the project? Like what, how many pieces do we need? What do we have to work with? Then we pitch creative. So we'll come back after that discussion and say, here are a couple of different high concepts. So like in your world, like I'm probably if you give somebody a, a logo, right? You might give them like three versions of the logo to choose from. We'll give them a, a choice of options. Uh, for how to tell the story. And then we uh, come back and we do a written treatment. So this is like uh, a roadmap that we'll follow. We shoot to that and then edit to that. And then uh, it's usually pretty seamless uh, editing process, which is really nice for people. Mm -hmm. So how like participatory, I love that word. <laughs> How much does the client need to do in that process, like in the whole process? Like, you know, a lot of times clients are like, I don't have time to market, you know, I don't want to do it, whatever. So we try to structure our stuff. So they just have to approve things and not really write anything or do anything. So how much do they need to be in the whole situation? Yeah, I, we are. We do like to work collaboratively, but it is definitely up to their level that they want to be engaged. So typically for sure, they've got to be on that. It's an hour long discovery session, half hour for us to pitch you. 
Right. And then we really don't need you until, unless you want to be involved in writing. Uh, I will say a lot of times, so we may pitch stuff that have actual scripts. We may pitch things where it's more, like I said, we are giving like, a, when you're working with real people, a lot of times you don't want to give them a script to memorize or to read up a teleprompter because th that is not a recipe for coming across right <laughs> authentically. People yeah. get all caught up in their heads if they're trying to, oh my God, I said that word wrong. Like, burp, burp, burp. so the treatments usually are um, like a description of what we're going to be working with them uh, to get to. And then, uh, so again, just to not to go off into the weeds here, but we're in regards to the client's engagement it's usually just reviewing those treatments and being like, yeah, that looks good to me. And then reviewing the edit and then giving us any changes. Okay. Sorry. I feel like I went off the rails. No, you're it's <laughs> the rail. I, I live <laughs> off the rails, but, um, yes. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Um, cause it's not like a DIY kind of thing. So I think you also bring up a relevant point too. the type of things that you're doing and maybe that goes back to your docu documentary, which is you're not writing scripts. And some videographers or some video production companies write scripts, right? They have script writing. And that's not the kind of work that you guys do. It's more natural, I guess. We, we can do both. And there might okay. be elements of both, right? Like you might okay. have VO or like somebody narrating something and then you cut Voice to over about a it. person yeah. saying something. Or okay. it's all being told by the participants, or okay. we might do something that is totally scripted. Um, okay. All, all of those options are out there. Oh, okay. But I will say in general, <clears throat> we are, we're doing the first draft. If you're looking just from a client, like what is going to be required of me? Yeah. <clears throat> we will handle the beginning of it and then um, they can we're going to work with you to make sure that we're getting it to the, the place that they want it to be. Okay. That's good to know. Um, <laughs> so the next question we wrote down is how video creates connection with your audience or potential clients. And I guess, you know, we write content for websites and that connects with people. And another ranking factor that Google likes is lists and in, in content here's a one two three right because people like to scan stuff and video is great because you don't even have to read anything so going back to the original question what do you think video creates how do you think it creates connections with people and audience like why do you think it's special in that way oh my gosh this is <laughs> my favorite thing to talk about I mean I think what I truly think what makes video like hands down the most effective uh, marketing tool that you have in your arsenal is because there really isn't any other better way to create some sort of emotional response. Now, not all video does that. You can have fun little lists or just be informational. But I think when it's most effective is when you are creating some sort of emotional response in the viewer, because Anybody who's in marketing knows when we feel things, that's when we take action. And that's usually why you want to have video is so that they are taking the next step, whether it's picking up the phone or filling out the contact form or whatever it is that you're looking for them to do. And how you create emotional response in the viewer is, I mean, there's all kinds of things, right? Certainly music is a factor, but truly it has comes down to storytelling. And can you take the audience on a journey, even if you only have 30 seconds to do it? Like, I mean, we've all seen TV ads that were 30 seconds long where we were like, oh my gosh, I need the box of tissues. Like mm -hmm. it, if, if you, if you do it well, uh, you'll get that response. Mm -hmm. And that, what, that's what makes video special. I was doing some research on Michael Landon because he wrote his own scripts he directed produced you know highway to heaven and all of that yeah. and one of his quotes says if you can make them cry you can make them buy and when <laughs> you watch his uh, highway to heaven because I've been streaming that on YouTube you're like crying <laughs> laughing like just in one show you're just taking on this emotional journey mm. and it's super powerful you know so I think it's 
you and Michael Landon have some some of that same um vibe going on yeah well yeah. I should say too like I forgot to mention this so my personal background is as uh I started out on the other side of the camera so I was I went to an acting high school I have my acting degree my BFA from the theater school at DePaul so I have that same you know that same connection to mm -hmm. storytelling and um and the and that emotional impact. Yeah. The emotional journey. Take someone on an emotional journey and they'll get to know you a little bit better. Right. Completely. I would say, yeah, that it's, I would say too, from a marketing perspective, it's connection, right? So if you're looking at two law firms mm -hmm. and one has, let's say an introduction video about one of their specialties, let's say a family law attorney, and they talk about their specialty you feel like you know them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and there's all kinds of different ways to do it, right? Like, and it's, a, it's like, not just like, this is my specialty, but like, this is my why, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe there's a story behind why they decided mm -hmm. to focus on right. that or why it's important to them or why they're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, you made me think too, like, so th the other thing I think is helpful especially if it's like a, a law firm or something where it's like a really like deeply trust development type of organization. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a, I do a presentation about creating video just to help you like in the referral process mm -hmm. and that emotional piece, you mm -hmm. can't make somebody trust you from mm -hmm. a two minute video, mm -hmm. but it's the seed, it's the generation from which trust can be built. Because if they saw a video and you were talking about your passion and like why you like to help people in this area mm -hmm. and they felt something like mm -hmm. hope or empowerment or like motivation, like this person's going to help me with my problem. Like mm -hmm. when they actually talk to you, they're already right. primed. They're already ready to, to receive because they already have felt like they got a little, like they know you a little bit. Right. And from a marketing perspective, it, all of the things that we create are like, how do we get you pre-sold? So when they <laughs> set the yeah. appointment, they're like, I'm in. I saw your videos. I saw that. I feel like I know you already. You're you're the lawyer for me or whatever. That So I think sometimes it takes like five times for someone to look at your stuff and then make a decision, right? This may accelerate that somehow. I don't have, have those stats, but yeah, I think that's amazing. Um, I guess it would make sense that a video is a lot more emotionally engaging than potentially a written piece, but who knows, right? So there's amazing writers. Um, Writing can be very evocative as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here. Um, what videos should be created for a business? So, you know, like, where do you like get started with how many videos? What should the content be? What are your thoughts on that, Stephanie? I mean, this is really, I think, where you come in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? like yeah. having yeah. a marketing strategy and really thinking about how yeah. you're going to use it and what that purpose is for. Right. Uh, helps, you know, I do think there's certain sort of foundational videos that are just great. You know, I do think everybody needs that about piece. Like if you don't have that about piece, you need to have that about piece, just that mm -hmm. foundational thing on the website. That's like, here's what we do. Here's who we help. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, like, like, what do you uh, recommend to your clients? Yeah, you know, I, every time you're talking, I keep thinking about Simon Sinek's, you know, golden circle what is it people buy why you do it not what you do it and so that's mm, kind of the about mm -hmm. so when I'm designing websites now for clients I don't do the about anymore I I try to design why I do the oh, why I love section. that I love that call it the why video that's, not the about yeah, video <laughs> yeah but if you're looking at keywords you know I think the word about is uh ranked higher but um <laughs> but you got to know the rules to rank them. But yeah, the strategy too, it's all about creating trust factors with search. And so ah. I think that you do that about video 
and create that relationship. And then every law firm, let's say, is different. So even if there's we're working with five family law firms, if we're telling your brand story correctly, you're going to sound different, right? Because some do domestic violence, some don't do domestic violence. Some are high asset, you know, working with RSUs and investments and some do smaller mediation. So I would figure out what, like you said, you know, what are your service areas and what makes you unique and then do a silo, you know, video for each one of those, right? Property, things of that nature. And I remember one of my design teachers told me this, only put the things in your portfolio that you actually want to do or work on, right? Mm. So don't mm -hmm. put, make videos about stuff you as a law firm hate to do or people that don't pay you, right? So I think <laughs> right. the branding, marketing videos can also be an opportunity to create what you want in the future, right? So if you don't have a lot of, let's say, you know, property asset, um, whatever stuff in your in work clients, then you want to make videos around where you want, you know, to shine the light. Great so, point. so the, yeah. And then strategy two, we can go into naming the videos, right? Because you should, you should name your video with the keywords and how people are searching for it. Not like, you know, a 30 year old law firm in San Jose, you know, is great. You know, it should be <laughs> nobody's like, searching for that. <laughs> It's a horrible example, but it is Friday. <laughs> um, but it should be like divorces, you know, I would have to do. So that goes to the strategy for, yes. search, right? Yes. What keywords are showing up? What are people typing in? And then you name your video that. So I think sometimes we tend to be too uh, clinical. So yeah. What do you think about that? No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I would say, I would say too, it's also thinking about how you're going to be using them and how you're going to be deploying them. Yeah. So is it mm -hmm. like, do they live on the website? Do you want something right. that you can use for presentations? Do right. you want something that you're going to email out? Do you want social media cuts? Like the way we work is really, we are pre-production forward. So we really if you're going to want social media cuts, like let's think about that at the top instead of trying to like Frankenstein something together after the fact mm -hmm. so that it's going to be effective for the platform where you're putting it. You know what I mean? Why don't you define what pre-production shop means? Because I don't think a lot of people know what that means. So Not the word they use. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I was saying we were we were pre-production forward. So okay. meaning, and that was really like that process I was describing, which is around like, um, we are creating something and putting all that thought in the front end, and then we're going to shoot to that treatment. So mm -hmm. when we have that written treatment or that roadmap, like when you see it, the edit, you're going to be like, ah, this is exactly what we talked about. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like, oh, you went to, uh, so Another way of doing video work would be to go and shoot a bunch of material. I'm going to do 20 interviews and then I'm going to give you the transcripts and you're going to look through the transcripts and be like, I like this part and this part and blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to like try and put that together and make a story after the fact. Right. So, which neither is necessarily incorrect. Like there, you can come out with a great product either way. It's just, uh, just a different strategies. Yeah. Different way of looking at it. And you're spending more time on the front end in the way we do it, as opposed to, um, and I think it's probably right. a little less heavy on, on the, uh, organization, honestly, probably that way as well. I you're think not that, having to like, that's a great stuff. point, you know, so that goes nicely into our next question, which is, you know, where should I put my videos? Right. And I've experienced this with people, right. It's like, what are you going to do with it now? Right. You got this video. <laughs> you can't just like post a, let's say a five minute thing on your website. First of all, you can't post on your website, put a video on your website. It would explode. It wouldn't run. Right. So it was right. a place to host it. Right. So I don't know how much of that conversation you're actually having with the client, but that's potentially where I would come in because for me, it's not about the video as much as what do we want to do with it? How do we want to increase engagement, you know, drive traffic to the website with the video? And so saying, 
you know, we want 10 snackable videos or you're like less than, what is that? Six short, 60 seconds, you know, mm-hmm. so you create a series over time. And so that's, do a lot of clients ask you, or do they just forget to say like, what, what do I do with it now that you're <laughs> done with it? Like, uh, we always ask, I mean, that's before we even put a proposal together, I ask them. And if they haven't thought about that, I will often try and encourage them to work with somebody like yeah. you first. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. one of the great things about which I love singing your praises about it was I <laughs> felt like it was everything was so put together already on the client and like, especially with the branding, the messaging, the knowing who the client they were looking for, like all of that stuff makes my job like super easy. Like it's, it's definitely a lot harder when the client is like, Oh, we're just going to put it on our website and maybe social media. And (laughs) yeah, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting because the one client we worked on, we designed their brand, we created their messaging, we created their website. And so, and we write all the content. So all, you've, if you go to the website, you'll, you'll be able to see who their clients are, what their value prop is, because that's all branded content. So that makes your job easier. So um, I guess video is a branding asset within your brand. So if you don't know what you stand yeah. for, it's a lot harder to talk to that, that other saying, which is, if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one, yes. right? So yes. you gotta you gotta pick who you're talking to, and if we're doing your website correctly, which we are, we're figuring out who your target demo is. So I've seen people create videos for thousands of dollars, and then they just post them, and they get like, you know, two clicks. Can I ask you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot because I was just talking about this in a presentation I gave yesterday, yeah. but like most platforms don't ding you for reposting content, mm-hmm. I get right? They used to, but now, so like, let's say if I were going to post my video on LinkedIn, because they, mm-hmm. I know that that's really, they only show it to a yeah. certain, yeah. like, so if I want to sh- put it up, you know, three weeks later and I'll change my copy, mm-hmm. that's fine. You know, I mean, so I, I know that there's a plagiarism uh, test that you can do to see if you change it enough and mm. you. so in our software, there's a plate, I guess it's called a plagiarism t- tool thing or whatever. So you, mm-hmm. I can share that with you. I forget what it is, but you can check it, but Google increases ranking for engagement. So the more you share a video that the better, the better right? it is. I don't know. You. Repurposing it and plagiarizing it is when you get into trouble. But so uh-huh. I don't know how much you have to change it until Google says, "Oh yeah, that's a fresh piece of content." Because posting new content on your website frequently is what Google goes. Oh yeah, that's awesome. They're doing value. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but right. So oh, not on the website. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I I would do the plagiarizing button thingy and check to see if how much you have to change it yeah that's that's a great point but you were just like different you know I think a lot of times not everybody thinks about how they could be using right videos as just to get back to your question yeah so so certainly on the website obviously needs to be on the website um not hosted on the website but on your website yeah uh I've definitely you can put them in of course you can email it out to people yeah. Uh, sometimes people put them in their subject lines. Do you, yep. you do that? Do I have, have a few in my signature yeah. subject signature. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your signature <laughs> line. Sorry. You know what I meant? <laughs> yeah. Totally. The one's at the top and one's at the bottom signature. Uh, so then, uh, like, um, so again, from a referral perspective, like if you do, if you do a lot of referral based business, sometimes people ask you for like an introduction blurb, like yeah. something in writing so you can include it either in addition to or instead mm-hmm. of uh if you are the type of business that responds to a lot of rfps mm-hmm. it is a great way to kind of get in like a little bit if they'll allow you to include it like just a little bit of special sauce that mm-hmm. might not come across in the writing mm-hmm. uh oh and if you do presentations like mm-hmm. if you do live speaking or even before a sales presentation or something like great something you can play beforehand and get people all hyped up for what you're about to say. And then of course, all the social media stuff. Right. I, 
and you know, starting off a presentation with a testimonial from one of your clients is always a great way to get started. Right. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's interesting. And I would say, you know, with marketing analytics is really important, right? Because marketing is all about testing and measuring. And so if you don't know if people are clicking on it, if you don't know if people are engaging with it, then you're really losing a piece of your investment, right? Because you want to see how it's working. So definitely putting it into Vimeo or YouTube or tracking it somehow with analytics is super important. You know, when we're working with some of our clients, we use um, Data Studio or Go what is it? Google Console. And we can track the event, how many people opened it, how many people clicked on it, how long did they watch, how many people finished it. I mean, these wow. are yeah. interesting. I mean, that's it. Yeah, and YouTube too. Yeah. Yeah. Because you want to make sure you're creating content that actually speaks to your peeps that, you know, <laughs> yes, right? yes. You may have this like great idea that nobody really cares about. Right. Which is also good. But if we're looking at marketing as an, <laughs> an ROI, then, you know, right. See so, all that numbers stuff. That's yeah. That's why they need you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So finishing up, I thought we were talking about this question. If I'm a marketing manager and I want to like at a law firm, say I'm mm -hmm. a marketing manager at a law firm and, you know, we haven't done in a lot of marketing or I, but I know we need videos. A lot of people come to me and they say, okay, we need SEO. I don't know anything about it. I just know everybody else is doing it. We need to do it to stay competitive. Right. Yeah. Where do I, how do I do it? How long does it take? Can you do it in an hour? <laughs> I'm like, no. okay. So if I'm a marketing manager at a law firm and I know I need to do videos to stay competitive, you know, what would, where should I get started? What are some of the things I should look for? Oh gosh. Uh, so I would say uh, the first of all thing to do is uh, think about how much budget makes sense. There is a wide variety of different kinds of video production and things available to you. So it's just great to sort of have some parameters uh, within to work. So I would definitely start with the budget. I would think about who do you getting buy-in internally, like especially if you're going to do work that's highlighting your partners and you know senior associates and whatever, like you want to make sure that they are on board. <laughs> and ready to be engaged or do, uh, do you have or do they have uh, clients that are willing to share stories all of that good stuff um man what else do you need to think about did I miss anything I think that's good I think going back to a budget right when you're having a conversation about doing anything in marketing you know you have to have a marketing budget right and I think yep you said get everybody on board right get all the partners and stuff to say and they may not be educated enough about marketing yet right because I had a law firm say to me once my first car didn't cost as much as that website you know and that was the senior partner you know and I don't know right. how, what the car was but it, you know <laughs> a long time ago right so, <laughs> setting expectations around marketing as an investment yes right yes because uh, if it's if if you need to do it and the firm hasn't done a lot of research, they may go, oh God, videos, ugh, you know, or oh websites. But it's an essential part of doing business now. So setting that expectation with the budget and then um, making sure you've got people in there that want to show up on the screen, right? That they're yes, they don't scream <laughs> when they see themselves in the mirror. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you provide any kind of like makeup or like outfit suggestions or stuff like that? So we provide, yeah, we definitely like have a ton of information and content that we provide around what we recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't typically work with a makeup artist or a stylist on set, although that's certainly something we could do uh, mm -hmm. if that was something that you wanted. Mm -hmm. I will say for the kind of work we do, I feel like in general, 
it's almost better if the people are doing that for themselves, right. you know, because they have the people they they have their hairstylists that they're comfortable mm-hmm. with. Uh, they have, so, you know, they're going to come up and show up looking how they right. want to look. They think they look good, right? Yes, exactly. Whereas opposed to sometimes if you have an artist on set, they're making you look not how you feel like you yeah. look. Oh yeah, I know that. <laughs> I've been through that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why do I look like how I look on Instagram (laughs) well you were drunk in that photo and it has 12 filters on it so basically you look like you were just born why don't I look (laughs) like that in in real life and I will say too like I think sometimes people have this impression that you need to have like a a lot of makeup on for video which is really like sort of an outdated idea from being like in a studio with a ton of super hot lights where you do need a ton of makeup to look just like a regular person but Mm -hmm. in general for most video shoots the equipment and the lighting we're using like you do not need to have uh, more makeup on than you normally would most of the time yeah and I think you know that brings up maybe a final point here and then we can wrap it up which is you know authenticity being a key factor in video right and I know I've heard people say oh I just don't want to be on video I hate the way that I look I'm not going to say it right uh you know complaining about that but from my experience and when I'm watching videos a lot of it is showing someone coughing or burping or dropping something to kind of create that personal connection can you talk a little bit about that and like how that's awesome yes yes I love that you brought that up and actually I was just having um I recorded something yesterday with some video producers and one of the women on the call brought up that actually women and women owned uh businesses use video less uh so I think that Mm -hmm there's probably some barriers there, not just around appearance, but around some of those other things that you were talking about, just because of how we're sort of societally conditioned to, to be perfect or if not be, if, or not do it. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do, I'm a strong believer that like, yes, you don't want to have 20 million filler words, but if you say, um, if you look up and think about something and then come back to the camera. If you, these are the things that make us human and real and, uh, and disarm people, right? Like, yeah, to your point, I think, I think those moments make us more, give us more of a sense of who you are. Show your humanity. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's where you connect with people. So I guess you have to, be okay with who you are if you're going to create videos. Yes. Yes. And I will say, I mean, that is really something that I think our team really helps a lot is Mm -hmm. to create an environment on set. Like we are almost always, uh, we're not in a studio. We're coming to you. We're on site. You're in a, we're setting you up for your best Mm -hmm. opportunity to feel natural or feel comfortable in what is a super unnatural (laughs) setting, which is like a camera and lights and people looking at you. Uh, But I think that we are, do a really great job of letting, getting people to a place where they can feel comfortable. Yeah. How many people do you typically have on, you don't call it set on shoot. How many people do you have like a lighting guy, you like how many people? I do call it on set and it is, it is really for our team. It's really just, uh, me and my partner. And we, I think that's one of the nice things about us too, is like, it's us all the way through. So it's not like when you show up to film, it's some 20 year old you never met. Like it's Mm -hmm. the, (laughs) it's a through line, uh, a consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's really helpful. So how should people, if people want to learn about videos and what it could do for them, how should they reach out to you, Stephanie? Oh, thank you for asking. So definitely, of course, go to the website, www.flowcontent, 
flowcreatorscoach.com. That's F L O, no okay. W. And uh, I definitely encourage you to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay. You can, I'm pretty sure I'm the only Stephanie Chitarian on there. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's wrapping it up here. Is there any final words you'd like to share with us? <laughs> I just want to thank you for having me. This has been such a fun conversation. Yeah. And uh, I pre- I feel like I learned something today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you being on the golden hour. We used to do these in person in the city and now they're all virtual. So I can't toast you with a glass of Sauvignon Blanc or it's too early. Well, it's almost 12, but um, <laughs> thanks That's for right. being on the show, the show, pod, podcast, whatever. It was great talking to you. Video is important. I know it provides a competitive edge for people. And if you hire the right person like Stephanie to help you create that story, it can be super powerful game changer for your business. So thanks so much for uh, being on the podcast, Stephanie. And I will hit stop recording here if I can find it.